Festival, and we are joined by a special guest. Eric Schmidt is here, of course, the former Google CEO and chairman, uh, executive chairman. He's the co-founder now of Schmidt Futures and the co-author uh, of The Age of AI and Our Human Future. And we should mention that NBC uh, News uh, Group is a media partner of the Aspen Ideas Festival. And it's great to see you, sir. Good morning. Thank you for waking up early. <laughs> it course. is early here, I know. Uh, so much to talk to you about. I want to talk about AI and all of it, but I also want to talk about what we saw over the weekend, um, in part because you just came back from Ukraine and had so many sort of interesting lessons about the, the intersection of technology, frankly, and war. What did you see? Um, well, first, I, I don't know Prigozhin, but the Wagner Group was responsible for some of the greater atrocities in Ukraine. So the less of them, the better. Um, Ukraine at the moment is, to some degree, an artillery war with very well-defined lines, line, you know, line, line, right. trenches, mines, and so forth, and line, and line. And imagine the courage of somebody trying to get across that line. You get shot at by right. uh, drones, you get machine gun, you have mines, you eventually get to the other side, you hit your target, and then artillery behind that takes you out. It's an enormously daunting challenge, and it's going to take some time. What was it like being there? Um, the morale in Ukraine is surprisingly high, and the air raid sirens go off in the cities all the time, and they just ignore them. So, Did you ignore them? Or uh, yes, I followed the, the, my host told right. me to behave this way. And the most interesting thing about Ukraine is that people can normalize almost anything, including a tremendous tragedy. Um, speak, though, to the issue of maybe the, the intersection of technology end this war in terms of what you saw with drones and what and actually how AI is impacting this? Well, AI has not quite arrived there. Okay. Drones have. And Fedorov, who's the minister, the digital minister, who was his PR guy, essentially, to become, with Zelensky's to become elected, has become quite the force because the drone strategies are controlled by him. And he has proposed an army of drones. This is all public. Right. right to try to use drones to sort of dislodge the 100-year-old technology that are used today. There's evidence that these FPV drones, which I didn't know anything about, first-person view drones, are essential because they're so inexpensive and they're so dangerous to the other side. And these are kamikaze drones? Yes, they are single shot, if you will. Single shot. So the drone itself is finished with when it's... And the components typically come from China or other countries. They're assembled very quickly and they're used by skilled operators to move faster than you can see them. And how much do they cost? Uh, $500, $1,000. Uh, for, for reference point, the U.S. drone industry, the MQ-9 drones, uh, right. the ones that we've used for years, which are very important to us, are millions of dollars in cost. Could we do the same thing? I mean, you've been talking about trying to revolutionize the technology behind our own Defense Department. Um, I've been looking at a doctrine which we call Offset X, which is to think about autonomy and decentralized defense, if you will. Right. Uh, think of these as swarmable systems that, that help us and keep our country safe. I think that's the right long-term doctrine. Militaries are slow to adopt for many, many reasons. We're going to see if this approach works and helps in Ukraine or not. When you think about what we saw over the weekend, how do you think it changes, if it does at all, what's happening between the relationship between Russia and China and, frankly, our relationship? I'm not an expert in that, and I haven't talked to them. Um, At the moment, China seems to be supplying both sides. And you don't think that's going to change? It's hard to know.